Hello, welcome to the video for what is volume, the pain causing volume. I am going to go ahead and I will run a quick example here. We have a pain causing volume in front of us. Let me go and reset these two default values and hit play. When I walk into the volume, you're going to go ahead and see a display on the screen. And every second we're going to have one health taken away. If I was to leave, nothing happens. If I go back in, it starts ticking down again. You'll also notice right when I go in, it will take off a point of damage and then continue ticking. So if I was to go in and out, you'll notice that it's just going to go ahead and take off one point every time. So that is using a pain causing volume. This is a volume that is pre-built by Epic and allows you to quickly implement a form of environmental damage based on the volume that you set up. So the pain causing volume, it has a normal brush for its size. You can go ahead and change its shape and the size as well as any other options that are standard to any other brush. For our example, I just simply have a transparent box so you can actually see where the volume is because volumes do not have any physical visible characteristics once you are actually playing in the game. Now, the pain causing volume section that is unique to it is the pain causing volume section. We're going to go ahead and go over those right now. The first one is basically a bool if it's enabled or disabled. It's a nice easy way of, for example, toggling your pain on or off. Maybe you have fire. Once it catches fire, you would turn this on at all or all other times you would go ahead and keep it off that way your player doesn't take invisible damage. Now we have damage per second. Damage per second and pain interval are tied together. This is how much damage per second is done and this is how many seconds per point per damage tick. So right now we have every second pain interval of one they're going to take one point of damage per second. If I was to change this to 5, for example, every one second, they're going to take 5 points of damage because our tick is set to 1. If we were to adjust our pain interval to, let's say, 2, this is basically going to be a multiplier. Let me get that back. So every 2 seconds, they're going to take 5 damage per second, which basically will mean 10 points of damage. So if we go and run this, you're going to notice they're going to take 10 points of damage every two seconds. You'll also notice they take 10 points of damage every time they go into the volume itself. This tick right here basically will happen every time they enter and then they will take a multiple of the damage per second multiplied by the pain interval every time there is a pain interval. That's how damage per second works. So if we wanted them to, let's say, take 25 damage per second, and we wanted it to happen every 5 seconds, if they were really lazy and stayed in there, we would give them 5 damage per second over 5 seconds. We'll run this. We'll take 25 damage when we walk in. 5 seconds later, we'll take another 25 points of damage, and that will continue for as long as I'm in the volume. So that is very simple there. Entry pain is what I covered. Basically, every time they walk into the volume, it will go ahead and deal the amount of damage you have specified, the total amount here. So your damage per second multiplied by your pain interval. Basically, one tick of damage initially right when they walk into it. Think of it maybe like a bear trap. They walk into the bear trap. It snaps shut. It's going to do an initial chunk of damage. And then for however long they still are in that bear trap, it's going to apply more damage based on your damage per second every pain interval. So that's what the entry pain is used for. Now our last option here is our damage type. You can create new damage types basically by subclassing the damage type as your parent. By default, the damage type is damage type. It is generic. If you go ahead and read the example, you'll see basically it's a way of customizing responses to certain damage types. We're going to go into detail of where you will see this shortly. But for the most part, I'm using a generic damage type. In your completed game, you may want to create a few different ones, maybe for fire and ice, maybe oxygen, poison, however you want. That way, when you're actually checking your damage event, which we'll cover here in a second, you'll know 
what type of damage it is, and then maybe apply something specific based on that type of damage. Now, how do we actually take the damage from the pain causing volume? A character, which I will go and open my generic character up here, if it is of a parent class character, it has functions built in that you can override that Unreal gives to you. By using a character as your parent class, as your base class when you're building something, you can go ahead and take advantage of these built-in things. If we go over to functions and we click on override, you'll find all the functions that are built in depending on the class that it is overriding these functions from. Some of these you'll notice like launched, landed, jumped. These are from the character movement component itself. Possessed, unpossessed, these are gonna come from your character. And then there's actually three more that aren't here because I went ahead and overrode them. Let me go ahead and delete one and show you the other two. Three of the damage types that are built into the character are the event point damage, event radial damage, and then the one I'm gonna override now is override and you'll find any damage. If we go ahead and do that, you will find it creates the any damage event node. Now looking at the any damage event node, we see a couple things in here, and you're gonna find the execute wire, which we're gonna go ahead and hook up. You'll find damage, which is our float on how much damage we took. So keep in mind on our pain causing volume, every time we take damage, it's gonna be the multiplier of the interval and the damage per second, so it'll be 25. So we're gonna take 25 damage. After that, you're passed in your damage type, which we saw here was our damage type. And then you also have instigated by, which is a reference to the controller of who instigated it. So if it was a person that shot you, for example, it would be their player controller. And then damage causer, which is a reference to the actor that caused the damage. In this case, we'd get back this pain causing volume. So for our example, we don't really need any of these bottom parts. We're just simply seeing how to take the damage. But if you use this pain causing volume, oh, for no, sorry. If you used a different type of apply damage, then the event enemy damage would have the appropriate nodes hooked up as needed. So what we're doing is we're taking our damage, subtracting that from the amount of health that our character has, starting with 100, resetting that, as our new value, so that way they now have 75 life, for example. And then I'm just simply using a custom function to update the heads-up display every time we take damage. And that is it. As you see, if we make this pretty simple, let's go ahead and take 10 damage per second every two seconds, and let's not take damage when we walk in. Should be pretty easy to guess. Every two seconds, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take 20 points of damage, and it's just gonna repeat until we choose to do something. Keep in mind this is just a, a volume with an overlap that basically once a player goes into it and the appropriate tick has happened, it goes ahead and sends a, any damage event to whatever's inside of it, and then we react appropriately. It's just a simple nice helper function. It's a great way to get some damage set up easily into Unreal Engine, and it's a great way of learning to use the built-in functions that Unreal Engine Epic gives you inside of Unreal Engine so you can quickly iterate and get something running without having to create custom code to handle damage, take damage, overlap it in terms of the trigger, and all of those other things you need rather than just simply drop in a pain damage volume, set it up, set up your character to take damage, and then set up something you want to happen. Pretty simple. So if you have any more questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.